Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my first impressions of the Monochrome Manga Club series reads for the month of February. The Monochrome Manga Club is an in real life manga club that I host at a local Barnes and Nobles. We read two first in a series selections and we are currently doing two series reads. So our selections for the month of February were Romantic Killer Volume 1 by Wataru Momose. This one's published by Viz Rated Teen. We also read volume one of Sasaki and Miyano. This one is by Sho Harusono, published by Yen Press, rated teen. And our series reads are Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba with volumes 15 and 16 by Koyoharu Gotoge, published by Viz, rated teen. And then we started a brand new series read this month, which was Erased by Kei Sanbei. And this one is published by Yen Press, rated teen. So since this is a first impressions video, I will not be talking about Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. Um, but if you'd like to hear my thoughts on these two volumes, you can check out my Desus 19 Diaries, which will be up on Wednesday, uh, for my thoughts on those two volumes. So let's get into our first in a series reads. So we'll start off with Romantic Killer. So Romantic Killer is about our female character here on the cover. Her name is Anzu, and she really enjoys video games and snacks and her cat. Until one day, a fairy comes and wreaks havoc onto her life. So this fairy, um, in their world, survive on the hopes and dreams of children. And because of the declining birth rate in Japan, they are kind of tasked with this project to help people they see as not being interested in romance find their way to it. Um, and so this little fairy kind of takes away the things that she really enjoys, her video games, her cat, her snacks, and kind of makes it so that her day-to-day -day life intersects with hot guys to hopefully set her on the path towards romance. And I think that's all I really want to say about <laughs> this one. It was quite entertaining. Um, it is a full color manga, which was really enjoyable. The art style is really nice, but I, I do feel like this series is entertaining. I did have a really great time reading this. There are lots of laugh out loud moments in here for me, <laughs> but I think this will work better for me in its anime form. Just a lot of the hijinks that come about from what the fairy ends up doing to try to get Anzu to spend time with mostly one particular guy in this first volume is hilarious. And a lot of times when Anzu is reacting to things, she is drawn completely different. Like, she's kind of drawn in like a masculine looking way in those times when she's like trying not to be foiled by the fairy's plans. The way this whole story kind of comes about was kind of strange for me, especially with the fact that Anzu is a high school student and not just a high school student. She's in her first year of high school, so she's still very young. I would have much preferred if Anzu was a bit older when this happened. I don't see why this had to happen when she was in her first year of high school. I do think the story would have worked a lot better if she was a bit older, but I think some of the hijinks that happen couldn't happen if she was older, if you know what I mean. I don't know. It was entertaining. I am not sure if I want to continue with this in its manga form or if I want to just watch the anime because the anime is available on Netflix. Um, from what I understand, the series is only four volumes. So that kind of is also weighing on my decision on whether or not I want to continue purchasing the series because if it's only that short, why not? Um, at least for me personally. But yeah, it was an enjoyable, entertaining read. I did laugh out loud several times, like I said. But there are things that bother me about it. And I'm just like, not sure if I want to continue collecting this series. 
or if I just want to watch the anime. Um, but it was interesting enough. I definitely am curious to see where this story goes, especially with it being so short. And so I'm definitely interested in watching the anime a bit more than I was. Now, I think I had mentioned before that I was already interested in watching the anime because Hana Natsuki voices one of the characters in this anime. Uh, but yeah, it was enjoyable. Don't quite enjoy how the story came about, but it is full of hijinks and laughable moments. And so I had a really great time reading that one. Now on to Sasaki and Miyano. This is a contemporary BL romance. So this volume pretty much just introduces you to the characters and starts like showing you how the characters met and um, starting to interact with each other. The art style is really, really nice. It's definitely right down my alley. But the way that it's told is very jerky. So like... In the very beginning, like in the very, very first pages, before we even get to the story, there's like this little comic over here. And it kind of almost makes it seem like you should already know what's going on with these characters or that you should already know these characters. So that's a little bit confusing. Um, and then there's another little couple panels in the first few pages, color panels. Which also are kind of like, I don't understand what's going on because when you just start a series, you don't know these characters. But it's kind of presented in a way where it's like, well, you probably already know the characters, so I'm just going to throw this in here. And that's not something that worked well for me. I would have much preferred to have those pages at the end of the volume. And even on the back panel of... The manga, there is a comic strip on the very back panel of the manga. Um, so, yeah, I didn't enjoy that too much. It started off the story really confusing for me. And then the story has a lot of moving in the timeline. So there's a lot of, I'm going to tell you what happened here, and then we're going to move to another thing, and then, oh, we're going to go back to a previous uh, section and it's not real clear a lot whose perspective we're seeing the story from especially when it's like going back into time and so that made it a bit confusing for me as well it does seem like it's going to be really cute though you already kind of see the feelings start to blossom in this story this is also an anime so I'm curious to see if the anime works better for me I know when I had similar feelings on the way that a manga like this is presented was with Wotakoi. And with Wotakoi, when I had read the manga, I was really confused as well. But watching the anime definitely helped me with the flow of the story. And so I think by watching the anime of this, it will also help me. But this was really, really like a jerky type of storytelling. Um... It just didn't feel fluid, for me anyway. And with me not really knowing much about these characters or this story at all, besides that it's a BL romance, um, yeah. Oh, and that Saitosoma and uh, Shiraimu um, voice our two main characters here on the cover. That's all I knew about this series. And so, yeah, it was a little bit disappointing that I didn't enjoy this read as much as I thought I would, but now that I'm more familiar with how the mangaka presents their story, I think I'm going to go and watch the anime before I continue with this one. We are up to date collecting this series, and I think there is a spinoff as well um, that's just recently released with a couple of the other characters, or at least one of them was introduced in this volume. And so we'll probably be picking that one up as well. But yes, I really enjoyed the art style. It was cute. Um, from what I could see, there was a little bit of confusion with the way that the story is told. But all in all, I did enjoy this one. And I'm looking forward to continuing it. 
And then the last volume I'm going to talk to you about today is the very first volume of our new series read, which was Erased by Kei Sanbe. So this is about a guy who at the beginning of the story is 29 years old and over time he has experienced time revivals. I think that's the word that he uses. Um, basically he could be in like any time of day, just depends on what he's doing and what's happening around him. But something kind of resets time for him where he knows that if he experiences one of these revivals, he knows that he has the opportunity to correct something that has gone wrong. One day, something happens to someone very close to him and he is able to experience one of these revivals, but instead of sending him back five, 10 minutes prior to, like it normally does, it sends him back when he was 11 years old before one of his classmates was murdered. And so in order to get back to his normal life, he needs to prevent what had happened to his classmate from happening again. And so these um, volumes are omnibus volumes. So there's two volumes in this bind up. I really enjoyed this one. This has been a series that I have had on my radar for quite a while. I've been wanting to watch the live action drama and I believe it was on Netflix. I'm not sure if it's there anymore, um, but I know there's also an anime adaptation of this. And so when this came up as a suggestion from our mon manga club members to read, I was very happy. And so I've really, really enjoyed this one. It kind of has that old school comic feel in the drawing style. Now, I don't know if this manga's art style is a bit different now. I do have Island in a Puddle, uh, but I haven't read through it or even flipped through the pages to see. But the feel of this for me is very, like, old school um, comic type feel. And so I'm quite enjoying that. I'm not sure when this was originally published. This is 2013. But yeah, I quite enjoyed this volume. I'm really looking forward to getting to the next one. There is also a comic in the back about something that happened to the mangaka, which I always find those things interesting. Though <laughs> the thing that happened to him was quite questionable. <laughs> um, but I did really enjoy this. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the next bind up because we are left with a little bit of a cliffhanger in this one. And so I'm really looking forward to that one. I'm really happy that my manga club members decided on this one for our next series read. So that's pretty much all I have to say about our first in a series volumes. As for what we will be reading in March... You may or may not know that I am a host again for March Mystery Madness, which is a month-long reading event where we promote and encourage the reading of mysteries throughout the month of March. And so since I am co-hosting our eighth round of March Mystery Madness, um, this will be my seventh year co-hosting, and I participated in the very first one. So I've kind of been with March Mystery Madness throughout its lifespan. Um, I have chosen two mystery manga titles for us to read in the month of March. So our first first in a series read will be Usotoki Rhetoric. This is by Ritsu Miyako published by One Piece Books. One Piece Books does not put the age rating on the back so I'm not quite sure but this is a historical mystery manga um, occurring in 1926 and we follow a girl named Urabe Kanako, who's left her hometown after it turns against her for having the ability to hear lies when spoken. She collapses from hunger after arriving in a town called Sukumoya, where she meets a poverty-stricken detective named Iwai Soma. Is this fate or is it something more? So I've been really interested in reading this one and it sounds intriguing. I'm not too good with historical stories. 
Um, but usually in manga format, it works out a lot better for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of this one. And then the other title we will be reading is Kimono Jihen, Volume 1. This is by Sho Aimoto, published by Seven Seas, rated older teen. The back of this says, Welcome to the Monster Detective Agency. In a quiet rural village, livestock has been dying off in a strange manner. Inugami, a detective of the occult, is summoned from Tokyo to solve the mystery. He meets a boy scorned by the villagers who call him Dorotabo after a yokai that dwells in the muddy fields. Inugami soon learns that there is more to the boy than meets the eye, and vice versa. So I thought that would be interesting to read as well, and it sounds very mysterious. And so those will be our mystery manga selections for the month of March. Also Erased falls under that as well, since it is a mystery following how our main character is able to revive time and trying to prevent the murder of his classmate. Um, and so we will be reading Volume 2 in the Omnibus for our continuing series read, as well as Volumes 17 and 18 of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba by Koyoharu Gotoge. I've been really enjoying this series, and so I'm looking forward to continuing this one in the month of March as well. Let me know down in the comments below um, if you have read any of these titles and what you thought of them, but please, no spoilers. I also invite you to join in on March Mystery Madness with any of your manga or light novels that you'd consider mysteries, uh, because I am always looking forward to recommendations for those types of titles as well. And if nothing else, and you'd just like to let me know that you were here, if you could leave me a magnifying glass emoji down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out, and that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.